kudos to you and your team for what I know was a lot of work uh, on the Hora, uh, as we all will refer to it as. I'm excited about several provisions, many uh, that you've highlighted. Uh, one uh, that hits close to home is expanded access to vaccines. Uh, Ward 5 neighbor recently shared how it would be great to be able to go to CVS and get the whole family vaccinated um, before this change. Uh, the youngest had to go to the pediatrician. And now the entire family can get uh, vaccinated all in one place. And so those minor tweaks uh, will make a significant difference in the health and um, quality of life of neighbors. And I'm excited about we talked about this offline, uh, but the the change and expansion for non-clinical practice uh, work for social workers, uh, those who may have a social worker degree, but who are unlicensed for them to uh, engage in case management work and other areas of work that may not require um, uh, clinical practice, I think is important. A question I have, and I'm asking my team to continue to dig in too, is uh, the supervisory requirement for a licensed social worker for non um, licensed social workers, uh, pathways in Ward 5, pathways to housing, for instance, um, they they would say there is a backlog in the number of people that they can help. And so this change will certainly hopefully support them and many others in their efforts to get people into housing. However, uh, I'm hoping that as this goes to the Committee of the Whole, if there is a supervisory requirement for licensed social workers, we can work to change that. As a matter of fact, I'll, do we have any insight there? Or we can follow up offline. Um, so just throwing that out there. Um, I think it's great that there's greater flexibility for telehealth access uh, in the committee print. It was striking to me uh, as it was brought up at the hearing that some people literally had to drive to a parking lot across the the DC border just to have access to healthcare uh, from Johns Hopkins and others. And so again, what we're doing here is going to have a very material change in people's lives. I did want to bring up uh, the controversy <laughs> as my office had around uh, CRNAs and the change uh, in removing the collaboration clause. Uh, from the code. My office, as I'm sure all of committee members have been bombarded, um, and I, I say that respectfully, uh, by those who are advocating on all sides of this issue. And the question here, uh, Councilmember Henderson, is can you just elaborate on the, the committee's position of why strike and collaboration or making it optional is the best path forward? I, just as Just to tee that up, some things that um, I've heard and why I, I am persuaded uh, by the committee's position and I'm prepared to support uh, where the committee print is, is because this has been in effect the policy for decades, as you mentioned, um, and that there hasn't been, um, to my knowledge, any or a significant number of issues or deaths or injuries as a result. Um, and DC Health, is also backing this. And so there's also, uh, for me, deference uh, to our health agency who's calling for this change. Uh, one thing that I would note is compelling and, and much of the feedback that I've heard is that this data point of 44 states uh, require either supervision, collaboration, direction, consultation, agreement, making collaboration uh, of some sort. So 44 states make... Uh, or has uh, some requirement for CRNAs to be su supervised or to collaborate in some respect with a, uh, a licensed health professional. Um, and I do think that's compelling. And so therefore, they some would argue this change uh, puts DC in a very small camp. Uh, and so again, Councilmember Henderson, if you could speak to why you believe uh, the committee's uh, position uh, is the best one. That would be helpful. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to expand upon that. So I think this is one of those interesting things where everyone has data that's different. So, you know, we looked at the National Council of State Boards of Nursing and 29 states, including the District of Columbia, allow for CRNRAs to practice independently. Um, so, you know, in terms of this issue, um, we we saw 
DC Health introduced the legislation, we also heard a lot of testimony. I think what a lot of people did not realize was that um, in 1995, DC Health actually changed the regulations that allowed for nurse anesthetists to already have this expanded scope of practice. Um, it was, you know, why it was included in the regulations as opposed to them putting it in the code. I cannot say I, I, I wasn't here uh, in 1995 to be able to do that. But, um, you know, DC Health says they feel like it's time to move it over and to make the change because every other nursing profession has their scope of practice in the code, not in reg. So why should nurse anesthetists be sort of pushed to the side? We've looked, we've asked uh, DC Health, we've asked the Board of Nursing, um, and since 1995, we have not received a complaint around some sort of uh, impropriety or um, practice around this. Um, and so we felt compelled to to keep it going. In terms of an adjustment we make in the code around collaboration, what the existing language requires is that nurse anesthetists would have to collaborate with a health professional. The definition of health professional could be another nurse. It could be uh, a tech. It could be anyone who is technically licensed or certified in DC, not necessarily a doctor or physician. Um, and so we anticipate that in some of the modalities of care or some of our health institutions, they will continue their practice as normal. Um, like I said, there's been this flexibility since 1995 and our hospitals have not changed their policy. They continue to do, use anesthesiologists and we have no indication um, from hospitals that they plan to change that policy um, in terms of uh, that part. Um, there are a lot of changes in terms of the scope of practice um, in this legislation for a variety of different professions. If we were to do what uh, some of um, those who are opposed to this particular section wanted, which is to repeal it, which is to change it, which is to um, put nurse anesthetists and require that they be under the general supervision of an anesthesiologist or another physician, this would be the only profession that would be um, seeing their scope of practice narrowed or reduced in this bill without a justifiable reason as to why. It would be one thing if we've had hundreds of complaints over the years about this being an issue, but we I, I don't have any data that bears that out. And so that's why we decided um, to move forward with a recommendation from DC Health on this. Very great explanation. Thank you for that. Um, and I just want to underscore that the option is still available for uh, CRNAs to collaborate uh, with a physician. Um, and so I think that flexibility with the explanation you provided makes me feel comfortable to support the committee print. And with that, I'll close, but again, I just want to thank you and your team for all the hard work that went into this.